Good morning, everyone. Sir, shall we start? Good morning, yes, we can. Yeah. Good morning, everyone. Uh, welcome to the day five, session one by uh, Dr. K. M. Anil Kumar. He will be presenting on uh, cyber bullying and threats. So I would like to introduce uh, uh, Dr. K. M. Anil Kumar. Uh, Dr. K. N., uh, K. M. Anil Kumar is presently working as an associate professor at the Department of Computer Science and Engineering, SJCE Mysuru. He received his PhD from University of Mysore in the year 2012. And he completed his postdoc in Deakin University, Australia. He received several grants from Government of India. He published more than 40 research articles in national and international journals and conferences. He organized several uh, workshops and delivered several uh, invited talks. His research interests are web mining, cybersecurity, text analytics, and e-learning, etc. Sir, over to you, sir. Um, thank you very much. Thank you for the nice introduction. Uh, uh, is my screen visible? Mm. Yes, sir. No. Yes, sir. Okay, yes, thank you sir. very much. Yes. Yes, Okay, okay. Um, so as introduced, I'm uh, Anil Kumar. And uh, my research area or interest in research area, uh, you know, as mentioned, is something I started with web mining went on to study something about sentiment analysis and uh, also ventured into because networks is one of my interesting subject so ventured into networks and then cyber security and he got disconnected maybe some network issue let me come back Yeah, uh, very sorry about uh, the network getting disconnected.
Okay. Uh, can you see my screen? Mm, just a minute. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, thank you very much because you know uh, so probably you would also have experienced and the same experience is the same because as a teachers we are being uh, uh, we are providing we are conducting online classes and we never know what is happening at the other side unless unless otherwise there is an acknowledgement from the other side. Okay, thank you very much again. So uh, see, uh, cyberbullying is again as I was mentioning, uh, cyberbullying is a very important topic, very important topic because. Currently, the cyberspace is uh, affected by a lot of epidemics like, uh, you know, uh, most of the threats, I think, uh, uh, cyber crimes and all the things that probably you would have come across in the uh, previous uh, 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 talks by uh, different uh, personalities. So cyberbullying is also one of the very interesting, but, uh, you know, one of the very important uh, thing that needs to be addressed. It needs to be dealt. Uh, it's not only the responsibility of uh, uh, only a few individuals, everybody who actually happens to use uh, the cyberspace or uh, the cyber world or whatever you call it. So everybody has a responsibility and they have to act accordingly so that uh, something called the cyberbullying can be controlled and uh, it can be brought into, uh, you know, uh, it can be brought under control. And at the same time, it's not only the responsibility of uh, a few citizens, you know, because more if in case you uh, if in case you uh, Google and you find, you know, there have been a lot of NGOs working on cyberbullying and these, uh, you know, it's not only the responsibility of these NGOs to create awareness about cyberbullying. It's also the responsibilities of everyone who actually uses the cyberspace. And also the responsibility is equally on uh, the people who develop technology. For example, we are, uh, as I'll be talking about cyberbullying in the uh, due course of time, um, you'll be you'll be you'll be able to uh, you know you'll be able to understand where exactly. Probably you also know, but where exactly the cyberbullying happens quite a lot, and also uh, you'll be also uh, you know informed that what kind of actions these uh, you know the platforms are taking. Most of the you know probably if in case you are using Facebook or any other kind of platforms where, uh, you know, people frequent and then, you know, they try to communicate, you know, just like, you know, they communicate. So there are certain measures that uh, uh, the, uh, the social media platforms, they have taken. But uh, the question is, are these measures good enough? Because most of these measures are more or less uh, manual in nature in the sense, for example, you need to read the post and then you need to flag that as uh, not appropriate and so on. So that means there are a lot of, uh, you know, avenues for technologies to be developed so that, you know, even technology can help uh, companies because the rate of post that gets posted in any of the platform is very, very high. So therefore it becomes very difficult for anybody to manually read through and all that. So that's where, you know, cyberbullying research also comes into picture. So that's where even we got interested and uh, currently working on some kind of research uh, with respect to cyberbullying and cyber threats. So uh, cybersecurity, when we talk about cybersecurity, you know, cybersecurity definitely talks about uh, the, the hardware part of it. Like, for example, it could be, uh, you know, probably the penetration and the intrusion detections and all those things, you know. Uh, that sounds very, you know, that sounds very, very uh, network. Uh, but at the same time, you can also, you cannot also rule out because there are other threats also in the form of like, you know, the contents that get posted and how do you handle those kind of contents? Uh, you know, that's also becomes very, very interesting. And uh, for anybody who wants to, uh, you know, take up or uh, do some kind of research. Okay. So that gives you an idea of what exactly is cyberbullying and where we will be going to and all that. But uh, before we actually go to cyberbullying and cyber threats, you know, I have a few small, uh, uh, what do you call as maybe uh, 15 to 20 or 30 minutes of uh, introduction to something like cyber crimes, because uh, probably there was one session, I think, uh, because I was going through your schedule. And there, there was one uh, information regarding cyber crime and the law. So there was some information that was probably shared, but nonetheless, I'll be just going through uh, these aspects very quickly and then probably you know that gives you an, that gives us an idea uh, basically uh, what kind of what are the different types of criminals or crimes that happens and uh, some of us are very familiar with 
uh, those things. But nonetheless, we just you know we just try to uh, uh, recapitulate and we we'll just try to understand it again, and then uh, we we'll just branch on to. Uh, the cyberbullying, and then I'll be talking about what is cyberbullying, how it's uh, different, and the research. If in case somebody wants to do some kind of research, or uh, what are the different uh, topics or areas that they can uh, work in, what is known as a cyberbullying. And at the same, at the end, you know, probably we'll be talking about in general how we prevent uh, cybercrime because all all of this is something like you know it all this comes under something called cybercrime. Uh, so therefore, how do we prevent this uh, cybercrime from happening? And then we'll be talking about the challenges. So, uh, as you know, as as just informed, uh, cyberspace is a very very important thing today. Um, so, uh, the development of uh, technology so has made, and especially if you call it as something like ICT, so the development of ICT has enabled us to communicate uh, so fast, so con connect with each other so fast, and uh, you know, we have all things connected that makes it. Uh, very interesting for us to uh, share and uh, you know uh, to be very interactive Hello. Yeah, hello. Just I'm trying to call him. Let us see. Okay, uh, sorry again, once again, uh, can you hear me? Yes, sir. Uh, slides are also visible. Okay, madam, thank you. So I don't know, there's some issue today with the network, I think, uh, so it's getting disconnected. Yeah. Okay, okay. sir. Okay, okay madam. Yeah. So I was just discussing, as I was discussing something about uh, cyberspace, and I, I just did, I did, I did inform you saying that, you know, uh, cyberspace, uh, is made possible because of uh, uh, the tremendous uh, uh, developments that have taken place in the case of uh, ACT. So today, probably, if in case you uh, say that we are living in two different uh, worlds, one is the virtual world and the other one is the physical world. So we are present in both. So because this facility was made available to us because of the a lot of developments. Excuse me, sir. Can you slide show?
Is that okay, madam? Yes. Okay. So, uh, as I was mentioning, like uh, information technology has made it uh, really possible for us uh, to make sure that uh, the cyberspace that we have today has uh, can be realized. And this is basically because uh, the microprocessor, the speed of the microprocessor chip, uh, you know, is doubling every 12 to 18 months. We see that, you know, a uh, lot of changes or invention happening in the case of microprocessor. And also we see that uh, the storage, we also see that the storage uh, density is also increasing every uh, 12 months. And uh, also the bandwidth or the network speed is also uh, increasing. So there are uh, cases where you have a, a lot of bandwidth at a reduced cost. So the cost is getting cheaper and the bandwidth is actually increasing. So therefore, the speed is tremendous. So everybody is actually now uh, getting a very high speed kind of a network so that they can uh, you know, communicate at the very, you know, communicate or uh, interact at a very uh, faster rate. And uh, on top of all this, you know, the price is uh, uh, is is becoming cheaper and cheaper, and therefore making uh, uh, the entire technology affordable. And uh, so everybody can be part of both the physical and uh, the the cyber world of the cyberspace. Now, when you talk about the, uh, uh, because as I've told you, I'll be talking about some kind of, uh, you know, I'll be just introducing to crime and slowly take you to the cyberbullying. So when we talk about something called the uh, the crimes, uh, we, when we say that India ranks third in the in terms of the highest number of internet users in the world after US and China, so that speaks about the volume of uh, users. And this volume of users was made possible because of the uh, the chi uh, because of uh, uh, you know the technology being affordable. So technology now has become affordable. So everybody has uh, become part of it, and that is a very significant, uh, very significant development that has taken place because today everybody has an access to post. Everybody has an access to uh, express their uh, opinions, express their uh, message. Everybody has that. So that is a very important, significant development. Also. We see that India secures a spot among the top 10 spam sending the countries in the world. So uh, the moment we are actually the, the, the third uh, largest users of the internet and at the same time, we are also spamming the world. So probably uh, we, because if you, you, you should, I mean, probably you should know or you'll be knowing that uh, 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 the spams, uh, I think majority of the messages are actually spams. So therefore, they actually uh, they become a bottleneck for the communications. So uh, there are a lot of spams, uh, some spam related messages that have been spent, sent across. Uh, so therefore, this is also uh, one of the uh, one of the uh, figures that is reported. Uh, can you hear me? Yes, sir. Okay, madam. Uh, India was ranked among the top three countries to be affected by cyber crime. So that is also one of the statistics that says that, you know, one of the top three countries to be affected by cyber crimes. And when it talks about cyber security, so we are somewhere in ranked 15th in the world. So we are, again, uh, we are not doing well when we talk about uh, the measures that we take uh, in order to prevent these things from happening. And when you talk about something like uh, the the cases, you know, for example, what kind of uh, uh, crimes they actually uh, happen? So, according to one of the studies in published in 2017, it says that uh, there are top five causes for uh, cyber disruptions are basically the first one happens to be called as the phishing and social engineering. So, probably uh, you would have known by now what exactly is phishing, but still. So phishing is also one of the very, very important uh, uh, causes for cyber disruptions. And at the same time, you also have something called malware. So I remember uh, uh, our prof professor Ranak Bhushan sir uh, was talking about malware uh, in his keynote address. So 41% uh, you know, is because of uh, malware. And then there is something called the spear phishing. Spear phishing is basically a targeted kind of a uh, of phishing where you know, uh, most of the, uh, for example, uh, targets can be uh, uh, the governmental or uh, financial institutes, 
targeted by uh, targeted only for you know causing uh, disruptions in their functionality so they we call them as a spear phishing so 30 percent uh, is because of uh, the spear phishing and then we have something called uh, the denial of service which contributes to 20 percent and then the 19 percent is because of uh, some kind of outdated uh, softwares and other things that we uh, you know we do not renew or do not uh, actually look into so that constitutes something about 19 percent so these gives you and this this gives you an idea about what are the top five uh, causes for uh, cyber disruptions and uh, as i mentioned that you know internet has become a, a way of life for us we are constantly glued to it and uh, we are basically living uh, both kind of a life and uh, cyber crime is becoming a very serious threat and uh, there are governments across the world and law enforcement agencies and uh, all kind of uh, you know uh, that comes under different uh, say for example it could be police departments or it could be intelligence all have started uh, you know uh, taking a serious note on uh, these kind of crimes that happen in the cyberspace and that could also affect uh, uh, humans and uh, organizations so therefore uh, uh, most of them have, uh, have come out with uh, cyber uh, uh, policies um, so what exactly is cybercrime? So cybercrime is defined as the crime committed on the internet using uh, the computer either as a tool or you use computer as a target. So basically, that, uh, so you here we use a computer as a tool or a computer as a target is what is defined as the cybercrime. So when we talk about uh, the cybercrimes, uh, the five most uh, uh, cyber attack industries are the first one is what we call as the healthcare sector. Healthcare sector is uh, very, very significant because most of the healthcare sectors have uh, gone for automations and most of the records are actually digitized and some are actually uh, maintained in the form of electronic health records. So therefore that becomes very critical. So, you know, uh, it's quite possible that some of them may have, uh, you know, some of them may can, some of them can use uh, 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 these smart devices or digitization uh, in order to in order to manipulate in order to uh, destroy uh, the records so healthcare is also one of the very important sector and the manufacturing sector again yes manufacturing sector is also one of the most attacked because the economy of the industries sorry the economy of the nation is based on the manufacturing sectors so um, uh, most of the manufacturing sectors also have uh, have also upgraded to automations so therefore um, uh, there have been a lot of attempts to uh, uh, to prevent uh, the functioning of these uh, sectors so that you know any kind of disruptions can uh, can have an impact on its economy so therefore manufacturing sector is also one of the most attacked kind of an industry also we have something called the financial services so probably you also know and uh, we've been reading in the newspapers and we also that a lot of uh, activities also happens uh, to disrupt the services of uh, most of the financial uh, top financial uh, uh, institutes so therefore financial institutes also are under attack and governments uh, there have been a lot of cases maybe you know uh, not in recent past but uh, maybe uh, somewhere in 2010 because after 2000 of measures taken by governments to withstand uh, these kind of attacks but uh, post i mean before uh, uh, 2010 so there were incidents probably you might have read in the newspaper or also that certain websites were hacked and uh, you know defaced and all these things were happening because you know the only intent was to uh, you know to show some kind of uh, uh, some kind of uh, you know uh, aggressive behavior or some kind of uh, you know so they, th those are some of the things that were actually happened so therefore government uh, installations and government sectors are also under uh, you know uh, also considered as one of the most sought out uh,
Yeah, I, I, I don't know. Maybe there is <laughs> there is some issue today. So uh, my uh, system is it's getting. Okay. It's okay, sir. The <laughs> continuous early reset. I don't know what's the reason. Okay. Today only it's happening. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, today is it's it's happening. Yeah. Maybe both are at the same place. Yes, <laughs> 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 No, it's. Um, I don't know. Maybe. Uh, okay. Anyway. Yes, sir. Yeah. Okay, continue with. Okay, so I was just talking about the government sector that's uh, 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 that's been most uh, also one of the uh, industries that's been uh, prone to cyber attacks and transportation. Yeah, because uh, most of the uh, developed countries, they have uh, smart cities and smart concepts. And in India, uh, we are getting into uh, what is known as the smart city concept. And uh, we have some smart cities and the smart cities also have, uh, you know, different uh, smart uh, enabled devices like for example you have metros and all that so uh, there's been a lot of uh, you know uh, discussions a lot of uh, you know uh, also areas where, where, where you know uh, for example metros and other things so that also could be uh, uh, what's known as the vulnerable point for some kind of attacks so cyber attacks and so in order to uh, deny some kind of service transportation service to uh, the large masses so that could also be one of the uh, interest one of the uh, most sought out uh, industries for some kind of uh, cyber attacks now the question is something like why do this crime happens so this crime happens because of uh, our you know the statistics say something like 42 percent is because of uh, the configurations that we do or because of the applications we choose so 42 percent is because of that and uh, six percent is because of the codes that we actually uh, you know, we would probably use or we would probably write or we would probably borrow. And then uh, we have something like 31% is because of uh, the end user error. So end user error could be something like, you know, uh, it could be our negligence or it could be uh, lack of knowledge in using it or and those things. And 6% could be, you know, it could be a targeted kind of an attack. You know, it's premeditated. And 15% is basically, you know, we do not know why exactly uh, this thing happens because it happens. Some people do it for fun and some people, uh, you know, they do it for uh, different reasons. So uh, th this is this is how the statistics says that. And there's a body in India, if in case you're very, very familiar, it's called as the, uh, the Computer Emergency Response uh, Team. Uh, so in India, it's called as CRTIN. So that gives you, so this particular website, uh, I in fact tried yesterday looking at this uh, website and uh, somehow it was not, uh, it was down, I believe. So I was not able to access the website. And if you visit that particular website, that website gives you an information about the vulnerability. So that means every time they make sure that uh, whatever softwares, whatever, uh, you know, uh, softwares or it could be apps that is released, so they will just uh, check them and then uh, if they are found to be vulnerable and they will make sure that those informations are provided to everybody so that everybody can be uh, cautious whenever they are trying to download or whenever they are trying to use that particular uh, software. So this is the service that is provided by the C uh, CERT in and uh, you know, so that gives us an information about what kind of activities, what kind of uh, vulnerabilities that exist and we can be very cautious in using it. So what exactly is the difference between a conventional crime and a cyber crime? Do we have any difference? Yeah, the crime is a crime, so there should not be any difference. But yes, of course, uh, in the case of uh, the conventional crime, um, you know, there are different things that is used. Whereas in the case of uh, cyber crime, so it is the involvement of the medium. Like for example, in this case, uh, we use uh, the virtual medium, uh, the use of uh, the computers, the use of uh, the network. Uh, can be uh, the medium can be uh, used in the case of cyber crime. And uh, when we talk about the cyber crime, cyber crime tends to focus more on individuals and families as they get uh, navigate through online. So that could be also one of the differences. One is offline, the other one is the online. And uh, in order to prevent that, we need we will be going with what is called as cyber cyber security. And cyber security will be used not only to make sure. Uh, families and uh, individuals are okay, but also we also we'll also make sure that the government and the corporate sectors are also okay. 
So if you have come across uh, different statistics and uh, readings in the newspaper, you might have come across something like this, you know, somewhere in the beginning of uh, January. So there have been a lot of frauds happening in the cyberspace. Say, for example, 32 crore uh, worth amount of uh, fraud did happen in the cyberspace. And most of these frauds were related to what is called as the matrimonial fraud. So there's a lot of matrimonial uh, uh sites and uh, communications and posts that gets uh, floated across different platforms and, uh, and there will be some people who actually get into it and then you know the fraud happens and also there are many uh, uh, there are many uh, portals uh, that's called as a career portals also uh, getting into this uh, the fraud business and uh, the point here is uh, 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 you know the fraud is committed by an educated or it, uh, it's basically a literate and also the uh, the fraud is also experienced by a literate so that means that there is no distinction between whether you are educated or uh, non-educated because everybody is getting into uh, everybody's uh, you know being preyed by these fraudsters and also uh, there was one uh, report if in case you would follow that says that you know Civil uh, cyber criminals they uh, target machines and in one account, uh, according to the, the the report published, Windows machine was attacked the most. And uh, uh, so, according to them, last year there were something like one nine eight five attempts per minute. So every minute there were something like one nine eight five attempts uh, on Windows machines and compared to Android machines. So. So you can just imagine, so Windows being away becomes a very popular operating system and used by many uh, across the world. And also it could be also one of the vulnerable, uh, one of the vulnerable devices, if not used appropriately, if not used securely, if not used uh, genuinely. So that means what I mean is uh, most of the people, if they use what is known as the pirated or kind of an, a software or a, uh, de, uh, operating systems. So, you know, uh, they become vulnerable and that vulnerability will be exploited by these attackers and that can result in a lot of uh, losses with respect to data and other things. And also when we talk about uh, the vulnerable states, we say that, you know, uh, Maharashtra, Delhi and this Bengal, Gujarat. So these are all the, the most vulnerable states because a lot of activities happens uh, in this case, in this country, I'm sorry, in this particular states, like most of the cyber activities are happening in this case, in this, uh, in these uh, states. And uh, when you talk about metros, uh, you have Mumbai, Delhi, Bangalore, all the, uh, all the significant metros, they are also under a very, very high risk of uh, cyber uh, attacks and cyber threats. And uh, there was also, you know, as I was mentioning something about uh, the cert in, uh, there was also the certain, uh, you know, occasionally they will release uh, information about uh, uh, the, the, uh, the, the software versions that, that actually uh, get released. For example, in this case, uh, they recent, I mean, they recently announced uh, saying that, you know, you need to be very cautious when you are actually installing Google Chrome extensions, uh, because uh, there were some instances where some extensions they simply uh, bypassed the security scans of Google Chrome Web Store. So, you know, today uh, we are actually, most of the teachers are conducting classes online and in order to assist the online uh, uh, classes, we, we have an habit of adding uh, what is known as the Chrome extensions. Maybe it's called as the attendance meet or it could be anything else. So we need to be very cautious in actually doing so because this report says that, you know, uh, there are some apps which simply bypasses the security scans of Google Chrome. So therefore, uh, when it bypasses, that means, uh, you know, uh, we do not know what exactly they are actually trying to get and uh, trying to fetch and what is there, what exactly they are trying to, uh, you know, uh, transfer and all that. We are not able to understand that. So therefore, we need to be very cautious and we need to be watching very carefully to this particular site in order to understand the vulnerabilities. Then uh, talking about the crime, what exactly is the reasons for crime? So the concept of law uh, has said that uh, the human beings are vulnerable. So we need some kind of uh, law to protect humans. So that's the concept of law. And if in case you apply that to the cyberspace, we say that, you know, the computers and other devices are vulnerable. Uh, so therefore, we need some kind of law to protect and uh, them uh, from exploitation. So. So following are the reasons why a, the computers could be vulnerable because one, uh, they tend to store a lot of data. Two, 
Uh, they provide an access uh, that is easier to, and sometimes uh, they can be very complex uh, to, uh, to people to understand. And also, uh, they could be some, kind of, some moment of negligence on the part of uh, the, uh, the staff or employees, uh, you know, in uh, not securing the data. And also, well, as of now, we, we are not very sure about what is evidence in the case of computers. Because uh, if, you, if you can relate uh, the, the natural crime scene, for example, uh, in the natural crime scene, so you would be having what is known as uh, the, uh, you know, the entire crime scene would be cordoned off and it would be, you know, you can see some kind of tapes put and you will allow the police uh, will not allow anybody to cross that particular crime scene and then people start collecting evidences but very similarly uh, you know most of the people are not aware of what kind of evidence uh, in the case of cyber uh, crime needs to be preserved so therefore most of them we do not know it so therefore it's quite possible that uh, by their actions those kind of uh, evidence could be lost so these are some of the reasons why the vulnerability of computers can happen and when you talk about the criminals, like who are the criminals actually? What does they profile? So criminals can be anybody. For example, it could be a child in the age group of six or to or to a teen in the age of 18. So that means most of the children, they start uh, not as cyber criminals. They, they actually venture into some kind of, you know, they venture into technology and they try to explore things. And uh, somehow when they try to explore things and then when they try to, you know, explore things and, and, and be successful, and that's where you know uh, they will be probably they will be lured or they will be used by somebody uh, for some kind of activities. And some children are actually some children are actually uh, drawn to it, and some children are, are become volunteers for it. And you know as a result they become what is known as the the criminals. And at the same time, uh, there are uh, the state sponsored. Uh, uh, groups like, for example, there is something called the anonymous Pakistani cyber army and the China's, uh, you know, Chinese hackers army. But all of them are, suppo are supposed to be the state sponsored. But nonetheless, there is no official records that they are actually the state sponsored. But we can see that you know there are a lot of activities happening from these groups uh, uh, targeting uh, different uh, uh, the Indian sectors, uh, different Indian installations. So that's also one of the the profile. And then there are people who have taken uh, the hacking job and the cracking job as uh, as the choice. Like some people, uh, they become hackers, and some people they become crackers, and uh, they work for companies uh, just to explore the vulnerabilities. And uh, some people actually do that as a living, and some people steal and do that uh, steal and and uh, and steal and use that as a living. So. So people have become, uh, uh, they've taken that as uh, the professional uh, kind of an activity. And very importantly, there are people who are what we call as the discontent, uh, discontent employees. So people, uh, the employees who are not happy with the organizations and those are the ones who actually, uh, ones who actually uh, give out a lot of information of the companies and uh, status and financial data. Uh, uh, username and password and so on. All that information would be given by uh, these employees. Okay, am I audible? Are you there? Yes, sir. Okay, sir, thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. So when we talk about the crime, so modes of crime, so I'll just go through this quickly. So I think probably you would have gone through this in the, uh, the previous uh, sessions, but anyway, I'll just go through this very quickly. When you talk about the crime, so there are various crimes, like for example, uh, the mode and manner in which they're conducted. One is somebody can authorize unauthorized access to your computers or networks, or somebody can actually, uh, you know, steal some kind of information that is in the electronic form. Then there is something called email bombing. Then there is something called data diddling. There is something called salami attack. Then there is something called denial of service attack. Then there is uh, virus and worms. Then there is the called th trojan. Then there is web jacking. So these are different types of things. So just to quickly go through it, uh, we know what exactly is unauthorized access to computer networks or systems. So basically, I can gain access into one's network through the username and password, or I can do it by getting, basically, I have to get the username and password. So how do I get it? So basically, I can uh, I can do that by, uh, you know, by either by sending something or getting, or just, you know, uh, copying uh, the information or just trying to see some of I, I try to get it and then I'll make sure that I log into that particular system or I uh, 
put in, uh, I just put, uh, write a script and using that particular script, I'll be able to intercept uh, the login page and then from the login page, looking at what kind of uh, credentials they have used, whether you know, uh, I can uh, retrieve as a username and password and then use it subsequently. So that's one way of doing it. So that is something like, unless I know the username and password, I'll not be able to access it. So use ways or means to do that. Then you have something called the theft of information. So basically, uh, big people like, for example, Yahoo and Uber. So they reported that, you know, uh, they have been, you know, they are big people in the sense they are the big company. So they say that in 2013 and 14, Yahoo said that 500 million users actually, uh, data about 500 million users was actually compromised. That it means somehow somebody stole that. And again, at the same time, in 2016, Uber said that some information about 57 million Uber users and uh, 600,000 drivers were stolen. All these informations are stolen, so that means it's the user credentials have been stolen. And also, in one of the reports that I read, we all know the existence of what is called as the dark web. So uh, there were reports that you know over 15 billion details that were stolen are up for sale in dark web. So that means there are people who are actually buying your credentials and then using those credentials to probably uh, to know your profile or to impersonate you in uh, different forums. So we don't know exactly how, what is their point of uh, usage and so on. Then they have something called the email bombing. Email bombing is something like, you know, uh, you send too many emails so that the mail server or the inbox or, you know, uh, that simply gets flooded and uh, you'll not be able to receive any kind of genuine uh, emails. So there was one case uh, uh, that was reported uh, some time back and that was of the case of a foreigner and a Shimla housing board. A foreigner actually, he, uh, he was so fascinated. Uh, he came to India and he went to Simla and he wanted to s settle down in Simla and uh, Simla being a, a, a beautiful place. And uh, he wanted to settle down in Simla, but, and at the same time, he wanted to buy uh, some kind of uh, a house and so that he can settle there. But unfortunately, because of his, uh, uh, some kind of uh, issues, uh, that because he being a foreigner, he need to get a lot of data. He need to get uh, the, you know, per visit permit and all the details. He was not awarded some kind of a, uh, uh, what is known as the uh, the house. So because of which he he got so irritated and he started bombarding uh, the similar housing board with a lot of emails. That was the first thing. That's how you know uh, email bombing uh, term was coined and uh, a kind of case was also filed on him. And uh, then uh, you know they got to know that you know, it, it was the response. It was him who actually was just uh, sending too many emails so that all the genuine emails were actually you know, not received by the housing board. And, uh, you know, that's how he disrupted the services. So that's what we call as email bombing. Then there is something called the data diddling. So data diddling is basically a kind of attack that is involved in altering the raw data uh, before it's been processed by computers and then uh, reverting it back after the processing is completed. This kind of activities were happening, you know, it were happening before, uh, you know, where computerization started, just started. And a lot of people were actually manually working it, and then uh, they were doing that uh, data entry job. And uh, most of the uh, most of the departments, especially the electricity board, were mostly uh, the victims of this kind of problems. But today, by and large, this problem has been uh, taken into uh, consider uh, has taken into consideration, and uh, more or less it's sorted out. Then you have something called the denial, denial of service. We know what is denial of service: flooding the computer resources with too many requests, and it can handle so that ultimately it should crash and it should not be providing any kind of services. Another variation of denial of service is what we call as the distributed denial of service. So it's where you don't have just one entity flooding uh, uh, a particular web server or any server, but you have uh, multiple entities uh, flooding uh, the server with too many requests so that, you know, uh, this can cause a lot of chaos. And uh, recent past, we see that we have heard and we have also uh, read in the newspaper that you know major sites like for example amazon cnn and yahoo they were all hit by these kind of uh, denial service kind of an attacks and this is a very interesting attack you know this is called as a salami attack and uh, and this kind of attack is basically used in uh, the financial crimes and this is very interesting why because you know this is the handiwork of a people who who are working in uh, the financial sector for example if if somebody is working in the bank what they need to do is they need to do a small change in the bank. Uh, they, they need to do a small change in the code uh, that is used. For example, uh, 
what they can do is uh, they can just uh, use this. Uh, uh, yeah, they can just use uh, something. You know, they can use. Uh, uh, they can use. A, they can insert a small program, and that small program can say that you know just deduct something like a small amount of rupees, say five rupees or one rupee from every account, from every account, and then you know transfer it to one particular account. So you can just imagine. From every account, one hundred rupee or five five rupees would be deducted, and uh, and you know, this is this amount being so negligible, most of the people will not notice it. But uh, you know, from multiple accounts, if this is done, it will go to you know, it becomes a very sizable amount at every month end. So therefore, this is also a kind of an attack. Uh, it's called as a salami attack that was reported. Then obviously viruses and uh, worms. So basically, we know uh, viruses and worms. So uh, most popular viruses of late was something called the ransomware, and then before that, there was something called the I love you virus. So yeah, and then again, the Trojan is also one of the very uh, uh, kind of uh, attack or malware. You can we we know it looks like an authorized program, but it uh, but but unfortunately, it's not the program. Once it's installed, it will uh, do a different job than what is intended for. Then there is something called web jacking. So web jacking is basically forcibly taking control of the website by cracking the password and later changing the contents, you know, later, later changing the, the, the password. So that's also one of the very, uh, one of the very interesting uh, uh, attack that uh, takes place. It's called as web jacking. And there was an incident that was reported, like for example, um, uh, there was what is known as the, the play school. Uh, there was a play school, a very popular play school in US and uh, that particular play school website was web jacked you know people have heard something called carjacking but now they also have something called web jacking so that means somebody forcibly taking your website and once somebody forcibly takes your website you can just imagine what could happen the contents could be changed and the services that you think uh, for example you just imagine you have what is called as the examination tomorrow and somebody can just change the entire schedule and make them available in the website giving a very false kind of an information about uh, uh, the services and other things. So that's what we call as the web tracking and so on. And, and, and other things like, for example, there is something called online uh, gambling uh, fraud, then there is uh, intellectual property crimes uh, with respect to copyrights, trademark uh, violations, computer source code, theft, email spoofing, like, you know, it looks very similar. And then there's forgery of documents like uh, uh, it could be, you know, photoshopping and so on. Then you have something called cyber defamation. So uh, publishing some kind of uh, defamatory article about somebody uh, or sending emails containing defamatory information to all that person's friends. So all the friends. And then there is something called cyber stalking. Cyber stalking has become of late one of the uh, very significant uh, crime. And uh, it involves uh, persons, uh, you know, following a person's movement across the internet by posting messages, sometimes threatening kind of messages, on the sites uh, usually frequented by a person. So probably you might have heard, or as well as uh, read in the newspaper, most of the film personalities uh, have reported that you know some people were cyber stalking them. And uh, yeah, there were some examples. So anyway, I'll just skip this. There's something called the internet uh, time theft. So internet time theft becomes very important because today most of us are using the internet and uh, we also have a data limit and data pack. Just imagine somebody getting to, you know, you, you have a username and password and somebody, maybe your neighbor, uh, got to know that uh, you're somehow, you know, somehow is able to get, guess your username and password and then uh, try to connect to your network and then use the entire uh, the data limit that you have. So that is what we call as an internet time theft. So that's also a kind of theft or crime and that's been reported. So having given a, a rough introduction to the different types of crime, so the next question is something like, uh, uh, these crimes are, uh, are committed against whom? These crimes are committed against, say, for example, individuals. It can be against the organizations or it could be against the society at large. When we talk about individuals, yeah, it could be through harassment, it could be cyber stalking, it could be sending of obscene materials, it could be defamation, uh, it could be unauthorized control or access over computer system, somebody unauthorizedly getting into the, your system. And then you have something called indecent exposure, then you have email spoofing, then you have uh, cheating and fraud. 
And uh, when we talk about uh, the uh, uh, the crime against individual property, it could be computer vandalism, somebody rendering your computer in, 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 ineffective or inactive, uh, transmitting of viruses and uh, somehow net trespassing, then unauthorized control and access of computer, uh, then intellectual property crimes, uh, internet theft times, and all these are uh, the crimes against individual property. And again, when you talk about the organizations, again, the same thing hap uh, holds good, like unauthorized access to control over computer systems and, and the organization network, possession of unauthorized information, cyber terrorism against the government or organizations, and distribution of pirated software. All these are some kind of acts against uh, the organizations. Uh, when we talk about society at large, you have pornography, you have fake news, then you have trafficking, then you have financial crimes, then you have a uh, sell of illegal articles. Of late, you might have uh, come across uh, selling of uh, uh, the drugs and other things, you know. So selling of illegal articles, online gambling, forgery. So these are uh, classified as uh, the cyber crime uh, against society at large. Now, uh, just, to, uh, just to go through very quickly. So uh, we have something called phishing. What exactly is phishing? Phishing is basically, you know, uh, you, you probably you get some kind of this kind of an email, so which looks very genuine, and it looks that you have got it from uh, Gmail, and uh, they are asked to enter the username and password. On the moment you have to click here, and when you enter the username and password, the username and password would be actually retrieved, and then uh, they can use uh, the username and password for the other activities. So that is phishing is also one of the very important uh, uh, threat. So similarly, uh, you know. Most of us use what is known as Amazon, so we need to exercise caution and we need to be very, very careful uh, to know what exactly is how uh, the website is spoofed so that uh, you know we need to go and look at each and every uh, word and term so that we need, we need to understand uh, whether it's uh, the original website or it's a spoof, spoofed website. Similarly, there was an, a spoofed website uh, recently rep rep uh, recorded in 2007 of ICIC Bank and uh, ICIC Bank, you know, there was a spoof website, so it asked users to enter the username and password and other credentials. So, so there was some uh, information. Uh, there was uh, the, some information that was uh, uh, entered, and then uh, this kind of uh, case was reported in 2007. So, likewise, you come across many such sites, spoofed, web spoofed websites, and we need to be very cautious in. Uh, uh, exercising or using them because it could ultimately lead to loss of a lot of information and data. And there's also credit card uh, scam, so a lot of things because uh, we'll be listening, for example, uh, you might have received some kind of uh, this kind of information saying that there are somebody calling from PayPal and you need to confirm your username and account uh, just to reactivate or reactive your credit cards even though you don't have a credit card. Uh, they will send you an uh, email invite saying that your credit card is blocked and you need to enter the username and password so you need to reactive uh, reactivate it so you know these kind of informations we are constantly receiving via uh, the email and the sms so we need to again we need to be very cautious in uh, using them and then again sms scams so sms scams are those scams like for example you might have come across something like uh, you send sms and earn money so that means initially you need to give something like 500 rupees a thousand rupees to be a part of it and then they will give you uh, some sms to send and after that they will be vanishing so that means they collect 500 rupees from every individual so you know and after that they will simply vanish so sms is also sms scam is also uh, is also on the rise and we see most of these kind of uh, uh, clippings uh, in the newspaper articles and elsewhere so we need to be very cautious about SMS camp as well but similarly a lot of information uh, that are available in the uh, the newspaper of this, of this nature and then again there is something called the work from home scams so probably you know you might have come across this kind of things like earn rupees 800 daily by typing and all that again this is also a kind of scam some may be genuine i'm not saying that they may not be genuine but most of them that were reported were to be some kind of scams because in every of these kind of schemes uh, you know a, the client needs to invest first the, he needs to invest some amount of advance so he needs to pay some kind of advance say something like uh, uh, 5000 rupees or say something like 10000 rupees as advance and after that after one month then you know uh, the returns will start is what they promise 
So whether they will be available till one month or whether this process continues or not, that's a big question mark. So therefore, you know, after receiving 5,000, 8,000, and after a week or so, most of the, you know, the cases reported is most of them simply, uh, you know, go underground and they'll not be noticed at all. So you, you might have seen a beautiful picture, you know, in, in, in this of this nature, uh, saying that you can work from home and all that. So it's, you know, uh, the information is provided in all the websites, major websites, uh, as an ad. So we need to be very cautious uh, to exercise these kind of uh, on the websites. And there is a new term that's called a cyber extortion. So cyber extortion is basically, you know, one case that was reported where a 27 year old man was actually uh, cheating a Mumbai based engineer through internet, uh, posing as a woman and stealing women from uh, stealing money from uh, his bank account. So these kind of cases also been uh, reported. So we know for sure we have read that. So this called out cyber extortion. So there have been many cyber extortion and honey trapping kind of an instance that's uh, that's been reported through uh, the the, the web websites and the uh, cyberspace. So again, there was another instance where. Uh, you know, some people, some person extorted something like 96 lakhs posing as a woman. So therefore, that's also one of the cyber extortion case that's, uh, that was reported in the literature. And also, there is something like uh, the common message uh, that we get something like, you know, there's a bomb and you need to pay 500 rupees or 5000 rupees so that, you know, uh, these kind of threatening mails are, are also commonly received. And this is also one of the examples of cyber extortion. Then, in addition to it, there is also uh, probably you know uh, something called sex caution. Um, so probably because you know uh, some sometimes uh, there would be some intimate pictures that been shared, and then that in intimate pictures uh, may be left in the systems, or it could be left in the uh, mobile phones, and somebody was able to get in, to get an access to it, and because of which they have got all the data, and that resulted in sex caution. So sex caution is also one of the things where you know. They use explicit pictures uh, to, uh, you know, demand uh, uh, money or anything else. There's also something called the international job racket. So uh, a lot of things happening. So all these are basically uh, different sort of crimes. And uh, majorly, social media is playing a very important role for all of these. And uh, most of the things are happening, like, for example, in social media, we have something called the cyberbullying, cyber, bullying, cyber uh, identity theft, uh, impersonation, dissemination of uh, pornography, fraud, etc. So all these is happening in the case of uh, social media. Even though social media has been a wonderful platform for us to share and uh, be in touch with a lot of uh, friends and family, but at the same time, it also been uh, used uh, for the other side uh, for causing, you know, for uh, cyberbullying and other things. Am I audible? Am I? Uh, Yes, sir. OK. OK, thank you very much. Now let's talk something like what exactly is bullying. So when we talk about bullying, uh, bullying is basically the use of force, the use of force or threat or coercion to the abuse, intimate, intimidate or aggressively dominate others. So this behavior is often repeated and habitual. So this is what we call as bullying. Where does it occur? So bullying can occur everywhere. Say, for example, it can occur in the family. Now, if in case you have uh, seen the video footages or WhatsApp messages being circulated, we have seen that elderly uh, persons, it could be mother, it could be father, or it could be mother-in-law, the father-in-law being verbally or physically abused by uh, the sons or daughters. You know, we have seen all these things. So this could be happening in the family. So bullying can happen, in, bullying can happen at the family. And at the same time, when you talk about the colleges, when you talk about colleges, colleges, bullying can happen in the colleges. Like, for example, a girl uh, you know, can announce that her boyfriend was stolen by another girl. And when she does that, what happens is the entire girl gang or entire gang will turn on her. So this could also be this could result in a lot of, uh, uh, you know, uh, a lot of things against that particular girl. So. That could also happen in the case of colleges, or it could also happen in the case of neighborhood. For example, uh, when uh, the, a neighbor can regularly insult the members of somebody else who actually moved in uh, into that particular locality or into that area or into that particular apartment, 
and because of various you know various things like it could be because of their language it could be anything so it could also happen in the neighborhood so what exactly are the effects of bullying so when we talk about the effects of bullying so if bullying uh, can lead to what is called as the depression and anxiety uh, increased feelingness of uh, sadness loneliness and there are some changes in the sleep and the eating patterns and loss of interest in activities they used to join uh, used to enjoy and when you talk about health complaints yes definitely they will have, they'll complain about you know there'll be a lot of uh, health issues and uh, and uh, suppose if uh, uh, suppose if it's a, if it's a student or if it's a person or if it's a um, staff so you can see their performance actually degrading uh, decreasing performance because you know of the tremendous pressure they are feeling and uh, it's also reported in literature that 12 out of 15 uh, shooting case uh, sh school shooting cases in us was because of uh, uh, had some kind of histories of being bullied so that means all these shootings uh, were reported by uh, in a way all these shootings uh, uh, when they investigated they found that the shooters they they were actually being were bullied uh, in their school so therefore uh, that that's that led that led to to what is known as the, the consequence of what is called as uh, the shootings uh, that reported in uh, the US and elsewhere in the world and uh, you know the student accused in Washington school uh, shooting also blamed bullying. So here's a picture of one person. So he was bullied because of uh, his, uh, uh, you know, because of uh, his figure. So he was bullied, and ultimately he actually ended up in shooting a lot of people. And that so school, uh, it's a uh, school uh, fellow mates, and uh, you know being uh, used. Then you have something called what is the feature of bullying victim? So when we talk about the feature of bullying victim. Uh, unexplainable injuries. So we have something called unexplainable injuries. Then you have something called the lost or destroyed clothing, books, electronics, or jewelry. So uh, the lost or destroyed clothing, books, electronics, or jewelry. And he complains about headaches, stomach aches, feeling sick, or faking illnesses. Then uh, changes in eating habits, like suddenly skipping meals or uh, eating too much which we call as binge eating and difficulty in sleeping or frequent nightmares and so on and also you will have declining grades loss of interest in school work or other works and not going not, and also not wanting to go to work so these are all the features of uh, a victim and the sudden loss of friends or avoidance of social situations so these are all uh, some of the uh, features of a bully victim and again, uh, feeling of uh, helplessness or decreased self-esteem and also uh, self-destructive behavior such as uh, running away from home or uh, trying to uh, you know, harm themselves or trying to talk, I mean, talking about suicide and so on. So these are all uh, some of the features of the bullying victim. But when you talk about the, uh, the feature of a bully, so the bully is actually one who actually gets into physical and verbal fights and two having uh, friends who bully others he always has friends who can bully others they are always uh, aggressive and they get into they are uh, uh, if in case if, if it's a school if it's a student or then they'll be always constantly sent out of the class because of their nature and aggressive behavior and uh, somehow they will be having an extra money uh, or uh, somehow they will be extreme, uh, having un, uh, unexplained money or belongings somehow. And uh, uh, they will always blame others for their problems. And uh, they do not accept responsibility. They do not accept uh, responsibility for their actions. So when you talk about bullying related, uh, why bullying happens and is it related to, bullying can happen to anything. <coughs> Bullying can happen to anything. Bullying can happen because of a religion. Uh, bullying can be because of uh, uh, terrorism. Bullying can happen with respect to race. Bullying can happen with respect to sexual orientation. And unfortunately, bullying can also happen uh, with respect to his disabilities. For example, somebody suffering from uh, uh, autism, somebody having an issue with uh, stammering. So they, can, they also will be, uh, you know, they will also be bullied 
So bullying can happen with respect to any of these things. Now, uh, what is this cyberbullying? So when we talk about cyberbullying, Internet has become one of the most important part of our lives and a lot of data has been generated and uh, a lot of posts have also been uh, posted every day. And as we know that a lot of platforms are uh, surviving on the Internet and uh, making the whole communications very effective. So with the invent of this technology, rapid usage of uh, uh, the Internet and the cell phones, bullying has become uh, a widespread, relentless, and become widespread and relentless in the cyberspace. Now, where exactly are the people bullied? So, according to statistics, uh, there are you know people, the, the, the people are bullied in all the platforms. So, here is only a small representation of it, uh, based on one study. But it's not the end of this. There are many platforms very similar to that where bullying happens. Say, for example, it could be. A Twitter, it could be YouTube, or it could be WhatsApp, it could be Snapchat, Facebook, or it could be Instagram. So the percentage may vary, but these are the uh, very important platforms where uh, bullying happens. So there are been number of uh, life-threatening experiences uh, reported on of uh, cyberbullying, and uh, you know that has uh, that has been uh, reported internationally and uh, and. Uh, considered you know, for some kind of uh, uh, attention that uh, it requires. For example, there was one person, uh, uh, Jessica, or uh, you know, say basically she committed suicide after uh, you know, sending uh, in, uh, you know, explicit uh, picture of herself to her boyfriend. And when they broke up, uh, so when they broke up, so uh, the boyfriend uh, shared that explicit uh, uh, picture to everyone else. So uh, because of which you know, uh, she actually committed suicide. And uh, there's, uh, there's another person, uh, uh, there's another 36 year old woman who says that uh, she's a Facebook user and uh, the, she says that uh, there are two people who are females and uh, she are, they are putting all kinds of information about her on their wall and uh, Facebook is not apparently doing anything because, uh, you know, uh, Facebook is not doing anything of this kind of bullying. And uh, there's a 12 year old boy who says that, you know, I've been threatened by somebody that they'll be killing me uh, and ask me to shut up, you know. So, so this is also a kind of uh, message that a 12 year old boy expressed. So, what exactly is cyberbullying? So, cyberbullying is basically we, we just got an introduction to bullying. And now, what exactly is cyberbullying? Cyberbullying is basically, again, an aggressive, intentional act carried out by a group or an individual using electronic forms of contact repeatedly and over time against a victim who cannot easily defend him or herself. So that is the definition of uh, a cyberbullying. And any sort of bullying is condemnable because anything is, you know, any kind of any sort of bullying is condemnable. However, the cyberbullying is more dangerous than traditional bullying because when we talk about cyberbullying, uh, there are many hidden faces and many of them are anonymous. So that makes it more uh, dangerous than the traditional bullying because in the traditional bullying, we'll be aware of uh, the bully, but in the cyber bullying, we'll not be aware of uh, uh, who actually is bullying. It could be your friend, it could be a neighbor, and in most of the cyber bullying cases, it is the only it is the person who are uh, very close uh, who will be re resorting to these kind of uh, things. So therefore, it makes them very uh, being anonymous can be very very uh, dangerous. So cyberbullying is also one form of uh, 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 cyber aggression that is carried out uh, in the electronic context against a person who cannot uh, easily defend them or herself. So it has uh, basically three features, an act of aggression online, an imbalance of power, and repeated over time. So basically a cyberbully has these characteristics. So he's always aggressive, and in this case, aggressive online. Imbalance of power because he's technically savvy, so he, he knows technology, how to use technology, so therefore uh, that's the difference uh, it makes because he's technically savvy and the victim may not be very technically savvy. And uh, this happens over time, so this is these are the main features of a, a, you know, a cyberbullying. Cyberbullying can be a direct or indirect. When we talk about direct cyberbullying, it refers to the action in which the victims are directly involved. For example, it could be sending a virus infected file or it could be someone excluding uh, somebody from the online group or insulting and threatening. All these are the direct actions. But you also have something called the indirect cyberbullying, 
when we talk about indirect cyberbullying, it takes place without the awareness of the victim. So a victim is not aware of what's happening. So simply that victim will be uh, taken out from the group and some kind of information will be published and spread across uh, without the notice of that particular uh, victim. And maybe there's a, a new hate page created in the social network uh, about that particular person. So this could be an example of what is called as the indirect cyberbullying. According to a survey published in the literature, nearly 43% of the kids have been bullied online and one in four has said that it happens more than once. And 70% of the students report seeing uh, frequent bullying online and over 80% of the teens say that the use of cell phone regularly, so 80% uh, teens say they use cell phones regularly, making it the most common medium of cyberbullying. And 81% of the young people think bullying online is easier to get away with than the bullying in person. And 90% of the teens who have seen social media bullying say they have ignored it. 84% have seen others tell cyber bullies to stop. Only one in 10 victims will inform a parent or trusted adult about their abuse. Girls are always uh, girls are twice as likely as boys to be the victims and perpetrators of cyberbullying. About 58% of the kids admit someone has said hurtful things to them online. More than 4 out of 10 say it has happened more than once. Bullying victims are 2 to 9 times more likely to consider committing suicide. So these are some of the statistics that was reported in literature. 90% of the teens agree they have ignored cyberbullying while some have taken steps to stop bullying. And uh, India ranks at number three in the list of online bullying cases. And uh, Facebook, Twitter, and all these common uh, platforms are considered to be the top networks for cyberbullying. Now, what are the different types of cyberbullying? So when we talk about different types of cyberbullying, we have something called the flooding. We have impersonation, we have inflaming, we have trolling and harassment. Harassment, flooding basically, you know, you're sending too much of information uh, uh, about a particular person. Impersonation, you try to uh, using another's username to bully a victim. Flaming, yeah, flaming involves uh, in more than two users attacking each other on a personal level. So, trolling, we are not, we are very familiar with trolls intentionally posting comments that disagree with other posts for the purpose of starting a fight and harassment, sending offensive messages to the victims for an extended period of time is what we call as harassment. Then we have cyber stalking, which we did talk about. And then there's something called denigration. Denigration is basically writing vulgar or untrue rumors uh, about somebody and posting it to in the public community. So that's something about the spreading of rumors or, or vulgar or untrue rumors in a group. So when you talk about the feature of a cyber bully victim, uh, so we, we, we've got to know about uh, the bully victim. Uh, but when you, talk, when you talk about the cyber bully victim, we say is, you know, these are the features. One, uh, unexpected, unexpectedly stops using their devices. The victim will stop using the devices. And the victim will appear nervous whenever using a device and appears very uneasy when he is at school or outside, appears to be angry or depressed and frustrated after using the device, maybe for texting, chatting or social media or gaming, and always avoids discussion about online activities. On the other hand, when we talk about the feature of the bully, cyber bully, uh, constantly switches the screen or hides their devices and uses uh, their devices at all hours of the night and uh, usually gets upset if they are not able to use those devices and avoids discussion uh, of what they are doing online. So this gives you an idea about the feature of a cyber bully. And uh, again, uh, according to one study again, uh, the issues that uh, uh, the kids uh, feel because from the cyber bullying and 9% uh, says that because of cyberbullying, they started alcohol and drugs. 14% says that because of cyberbullying, they started eating. You know, there's some kind of eating disorder. It could be overeating or it could be, you know, uh, the other way as well. 20% say that they started skipping classes. 
24% say that they have start, stopped using the social media. 25% say that they have involved in some kind of self-harm. 26% say that they have deleted their profile media, uh, social media profiles. 26% say that they have suicidal thoughts. 37% say that they have depressions. And 41% say that they have developed social media anxiety. So this gives you an idea that what is this menace of cyberbullying and what kind of effect it can have on uh, not only kids but also adults. Now the question is how do we how do we react to uh, the cyberbullying messages? Uh, so basically, we need to be uh, we need to be calm and we need to delete the post. We we do not have to respond or retaliate. And uh, we have to make sure that we change our passwords. And also, we need to make sure that uh, we, repute, uh, we report it as abuse, because most of the social media uh, platforms now gives you an option of uh, reporting the abuse. So you can just report them as abuse. And at the same time, we need to tell uh, uh, the friends, neighbors, or parents. We also need to block the person. And, uh, uh, also, if it's possible, report to anti-bullying organizations. So there are many organizations working uh, to eradicate this uh, menace. And then warn the persons of legal actions. Uh, then uh, get going with your normal work. And uh, very importantly, uh, take uh, screenshots of the messages before deleting any of these posts. And if it's possible, uh, try to reach, uh, try to get help. So these are some of the measures that, uh, you know, uh, cyber, uh, you know, a bullying victim can uh, take. Now, how do we actually prevent this threat, this cyber threat, this bullying kind of a threat? Now, every organization, okay, you just probably, uh, you can just Google uh, and say cyber bullying. So you will find a lot of cyber bullying watchdogs. So there have been many organizations because of, uh, uh, because of the, the number of cases that's been reported in uh, almost all countries where a lot of casualties, a lot of fatalities happen because of uh, the cyber bullying. So many of the countries have come out with a lot of, uh, uh, you know, uh, what do you call as uh, uh, their uh, centers or uh, ministries or, you know, they've come up with their own uh, uh, setup. So in India is also no exception because of the lot of cases in, in, uh, in, in, in uh, cyber bullying. India also has set up something like, uh, you know, the uh, Ministry of Women and Child Development, they also have a, a helpline so that all the cyber bullying and online harassment, the cyber defamations and all these are actually reported and actually taken into considerations. And likewise, there are many, many uh, private players. Say, for example, you have CyberPeace, you have CyberBath and all of these, uh, you know, they are trying to help uh, uh, the victims not to, uh, you know, to prevent them, counsel them and, uh, you know, and also encourage them to report these kind of instances to law enforcing uh, authorities. So how do we actually prevent them? So the basically one is we need to educate ourselves. We need to know what exactly is cyberbullying. So that is the very first thing we need to educate, not only educate ourselves, we need to educate others as well. So we need to understand what is cyberbullying. So and we need to share that information. So we need to educate ourselves about cyberbullying. Second, we need to secure uh, the online passwords. So we need to be very secure because uh, the passwords are very important, and we need to make sure that not only passwords but also other sensitive informations can be secured from others. And also, we need to be very very. Uh, careful when we are sharing. So we need to think twice before we share anything. So basically, uh, whether we are sharing an intimate pictures or whether we are sharing uh, a location out of uh, vacation pictures, we need to be very careful in uh, doing so. So we need to be very careful in because that gives a lot of a uh, lot of uh, avenues for some kind of crimes. Not only cyberbullying, but also it gives a lot of uh, avenues for some kind of crimes. And also. You, we, we should not be opening any kind of spammy messages because there will be a lot of messages coming from uh, uh, unknown people or unknown individuals and uh, probably they may be uh, bullies. So the moment we actually accept those uh, messages and uh, the contacts, so this will this process, uh, this chain will start. So therefore, it's always better that we uh, do not uh, open and read uh, those kind of messages. Instead, we delete such messages without actually reading them. And also, we need to sign out from all the online accounts because 
Uh, saving passwords is convenient, but it's always recommended that we don't save passwords on the web browsers because uh, uh, sometimes uh, we know that you know uh, that particular uh, sign-in, auto sign-in, can be used by others, and that could uh, also can can cause a lot of uh, issues. And also, share and aware others. Uh, if you come across if you come across these kind of information, if you come across these kind of information, it's always advised that you need to share about the bullying. So it's always very in interesting and effective uh, to share stories because those stories can help a friend or a family uh, so that they get to know this and that they can prevent themselves uh, from uh, being bullied by others. And also, uh, it's always better that we become a part of the group or, you know, so that we can spread this amount, this kind of literacy about childhood bullying, not only to friends and families, but to everybody, so that this can be generally tackled. And finally, you have something called, uh, uh, you, you know, uh, whenever we are doing that, we make sure that we are not the cyber bullies. So we make, we, we need to be, uh, we, 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 we have to be uh, sure that we are, we should be very clean. And therefore, once we are clean, we may be able to uh, spread the message to others. So it simply says that uh, if we are not very serious, so then we will not be able to effectively contain this menace. So uh, even Kaspersky also has uh, provided the information saying that the cyberbullying is the, the cyber crime of the century. So they have reported that this is the cyber crime of the century. So this gives you an idea of the depth of this particular topic. And uh, in Maharashtra, uh, so it was reported that you know, 400 cyber crime cases were filed on COVID, especially on COVID issues. So basically most on hate speech and communal accusations and so on. So a lot of things happening in the cyberspace. Now, coming on to uh, uh, after uh, uh, an introduction to what exactly is a cyber crime and what introduction to uh, the cyberspace and uh, the bullying and the cyber bullying, uh, we also come across something called what kind of research work that we can uh, undertake with this. So, basically, uh, there are a lot of things like uh, you have different uh, topics, like, for example, hate speech detection. And then you have something called the troll detection. Then you have something called the sarcasm detection, and then the office, uh, offensive speech detection. So these are the different uh, uh, areas uh, uh, that probably someone can think about uh, if they want to contribute into the cyberbullying. Because uh, there are other areas as well. You know, if in case you have followed, uh, there are other area, the other uh, uh, the classifications of cyberbullying, uh, which are little complex. And uh, so even uh, uh, these topics are also very complex because of the, the nature of the language, because the language is, uh, you know, uh, the natural language processing is very difficult. And uh, so therefore, but nonetheless, you can find many literatures on these uh, aspects as well, uh, especially hate speech detections and troll detections, the sarc sarcasm detection, offensive speech detection and so on. Now, uh, most, of these, uh, most of these works have been uh, reported uh, uh, for, uh, uh, like, for example, English language. Like at the same time, you know, probably uh, most, uh, it, 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 you know, uh, it could also be uh, thought about of uh, taking some kind of a cross-lingual kind of an uh, approach as well. Because today, if in, in, in India, for example, if in case you are talking about uh, in India, so people use not only English; they use uh, English and they mix so many uh, their mother tongue, right? So. So it could be English and Kannada, it could, it could be English and Malayalam, it could be English and Tamil. So they use a mixture of those. So that could also be one of the, because that is commonly used uh, now in most of the post. So therefore, usage of only English can benefit only the English spe speaking community. But uh, uh, there are others uh, in a post that needs to be also understood uh, whether they need to, whether they get classified as abusive or non-abusive and so on. So that needs to be also identified. So cross-lingual abusive language cannot be uh, one of the interesting thing. And at the same time, when we talk about multimodal, yes, uh, most of the um, most of the other uh, discussions, most of the uh, research works, you know, they have explored uh, the text. Uh, but of late, you know, uh, we have seen so many videos, and I think uh, that gets circulated in uh, we, uh, circulated in uh, that's been circulated or already circulated. Uh, or in WhatsApp or other uh, platforms where we see that, you know, there are uh, bullying kind of videos. So in order to understand that, 
uh, it's not only effective that we need, we need to have a, a mixture of uh, not only the text but also the video as well. So some kind of multimodal uh, approach uh, should be also thought about can also be things. And uh, then also human computer interactions. Uh, that's also one of the interesting uh, uh, area that somebody can think about uh, working on this. So uh, major challenges uh, when we talk about these uh, uh, would be something like uh, the challenges would be is uh, you know one of them is uh, the the data set. One of the major challenges is with the data set. One because the common data set that we have uh, the common data set that we have as of now is. Uh, what we call as uh, the the Twitter data set. You know, most of the Twitter data set uh, we have a, a data set. We have something called uh, uh, a, a data set that is from Twitter, and uh, but uh, we do not have any other data sets with respect to other platforms. And we know what exactly Twitter, and we also know the limitations of Twitter. And uh, can we generalize it, or can we you know can we use it to generalize the other? Uh, uh, the websites or web, uh, web platforms is one of the question mark, is also one of the question mark that we need to answer. Also, uh, you know, when we compare it to Twitter, there are other websites like, for example, Facebook or Instagrams where they use uh, different, uh, you know, media like it could be the emoticons, emotion, emoticons, or different kinds of things. So, how do we exp we basically explore uh, data from them? So that also becomes an interesting. Uh, uh, that could also become a very interesting uh, challenge to us, and uh, and obviously uh, there are many. You know, uh, uh, for example, when you talk about sarcasm and all that, they are not very difficult. They are sorry, sorry, they are very difficult, and the need to understand the context. So, in order to understand the context, uh, you know, uh, this again, there's some amount of work that needs to be done. So, this gives you an idea about. What kind of research avenues that we can uh, take up in uh, cyberbullying, and uh, uh, and also the challenges, especially with respect to data sets, and uh, um, you know all those things. So this, you know, these are some of the things that uh, probably you will come across if you are looking, if you are, if you, if you, if you want to look into the data sets. You know, these are some of the things like uh, you get. Most of them are pretty the text related, but again, we need to explore the others because most of the bullings. Uh, say it happens in YouTube, or it also happens in uh, the Instagram. So therefore, we need to have methods, uh, automations uh, that could help authorities to flag and them as uh, you know bullying event, a bullying kind of post, or bullying kind of videos, uh, because um, you know that would really mix uh, uh, you know uh, the usage of social media uh, more feasible, not only to us but also to the kids uh, that you know who will be using them. Uh, you know, uh, for uh, you know, probably uh, socializing or maybe for uh, education or any other purpose. Now, when we talk about prevention of cyber crime, just to you know, prevention. When we talk about preventing these cyber, kind of cyber crime, so we need to prevent cyber crimes. To prevent them, we should avoid uh, disclosing any kind of information uh, related to oneself. Uh, so this is uh, very good. Uh, this is as good as disclosing your identity to strangers in public place. And always avoid any sending any kind of photographs uh, to strangers and friends. And always make sure that you update the antivirus softwares to guard against virus attacks. And always make sure that you adequately back up the volumes, uh, whatever uh, you know data that you want to, whatever data that you have, make sure they are backed up. Never send any kind of credit information, credit card information to anybody. So against to guard, to guard against the frauds, and uh, also uh, make sure that uh, you keep a watch on the sites, especially if you are talking about the children, uh, what they are trying to access and prevent them from some kind of harassment. And it's also uh, it's also better that you know you use some kind of security program that gives control over cookies and send information back to site as Leaving uh, the cookies unguarded may be very uh, uh, fatal. Uh, website owner should watch uh, the traffic and check uh, the irregularities on the side. And uh, use of firewalls can be definitely beneficial. And uh, web servers running in public site must be physically separated from the internal corporate uh, network. Also, it would be beneficial if the operating system is up to date and the antivirus is up to date anti-spyware is up to date and uh, also 
use what is known as a pop-up advertising blocker and uh, use a very strong password, um, use a secure, a secure wireless network, and also make sure that the websites are reputable uh, and mobile applications that you use are reputable. And always avoid clicking of any unexpected or unfamiliar links. So when you talk, when you talk about some kind of challenges, so the hardware and software issues, they always remain a big challenge in most of the uh, universities, industries, so that they remain a big challenge. Lack of awareness can also be a big challenge. Loss can be a big challenge because, you know, uh, there have been lot, lot uh, there been, there been more and more uh, things that gets added. And uh, jurisdiction can be a big challenge because we see that most of the crimes happen in US and we are, and that the victim may be in India. So uh, how do we actually tackle this can also be one of the issues. And uh, hesitation to report an offense can also be one of the major challenge. And uh, training, uh, you know, orientation, so cyber security orientation or cyber orientation about cyber crime and threats uh, should be made a mandate to everybody so that because most of us are using uh, the cyberspace for all kind of communications transactions today. So therefore, training is an important must. So just to conclude, uh, Internet has basically enabled us to uh, communicate with people and also uh, share resources that are beneficial to society in many ways. And at the same time, it has opened a, a, a virtual world for people to carry out their activities. And uh, in some cases, be anonymous. And uh, every day, oh, we have been, uh, there have been some kind of uh, different forms of issues that are faced by the cyber world. And uh, that has resulted in some kind of uh, losses. It could be in terms of life or property of an individual, organizations, or it could be of the government. So there is a need for us to continuously work to address the issues related to the cyber crime and uh, for bullying as well as uh, threats to uh, corporate research and development that we can contribute and uh, the government policies and also collaborate with industries and governments provide adequate trainings and and then you know educate the society through proper uh, societal outreach programs and so on so okay so thank you oh, we've been uh, for a patient hearing any questions any questions from the audience So, thank you, sir. Uh, you have you have created awareness about different cyber crime with lot of uh, statistics. Thank you very much for your uh, good presentation. Uh, thanks a lot, sir. Thank you, madam. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you. Thank you.